The British Trust for Ornithology tracks the migratory paths of our native birds, whose numbers are diminishing. Increasingly, it is turning to radio and satellite tracking technologies. Well, the British Trust for Ornithology was founded about 80 years ago, in fact 80 years ago last Monday, um, when someone wrote a letter to the Times suggesting that people should get together, put some money together and start up a, a monitoring scheme for birds in Britain. Um, since then we've developed massively um, and we're now the main independent research organisation that looks at bird populations within Britain. We know a lot of migratory birds whose populations are declining um, spend most of the year elsewhere, so to try and find out um, where they're going and what other things might be affecting them elsewhere. We're using a variety of different tracking technologies. Um, on larger birds we use um, a thing called uh, a platform, platform transmitter terminal which is basically a radio tag um, the signals of which are picked up by passing satellites and they use the Doppler effect to locate the tag on the ground. This information is then beamed down to the um, Argos system base station who sends it to us via the internet. Um, for smaller species we use um, things called geolocators which are basically archival light level recorders which enable us to reconstruct the migratory path by comparing the light level information which is recorded once a minute against a clock and a calendar and then using day length uh, and the time of midday you can get longitude and latitude. But basically what this little device does is it records um, light intensity once per minute against a clock and a calendar and we know that there's a consistent relationship between latitude and day length on any, um, in relation to date. So by, from day length you can work out how far north and south you are on almost any day of the year. It doesn't actually work close to the equinox periods because by definition they have equal day length all the way from the North Pole to the South Pole but at other times there's a gradient in day length going from the North Pole down to the South. From the time of solar midday, which is the midpoint between dawn and dusk, you can work out how far east and west you are because the, the Earth spins on its axis in such a way as one line of longitude is exposed to the sun at its highest point, its azimuth, um, at any one moment. So from, from day length we get how far north-south you are and from the time of solar midday we get how far east-west you are. And this enables us to reconstruct the paths of the, of the, of the small migrants using only um, the light intensity data which this little device records. Um, it's not absolutely perfect because environmental conditions will determine um, the light levels that are recorded so we have things such as um, cloud cover, the vegetation that the bird is in, the behaviour of the bird, even the plumage of the bird itself can all affect um, the light intensity measures but nonetheless we're able to reconstruct their migratory paths surprisingly well using this information. So the cuckoos are slightly larger birds than a lot of the birds we are tagging such as swifts and nightingales. They weigh over 100 grams and that means that we can put on devices which weigh up to 4 or 5 grams. Um, and, and the smallest um, satellite tag, PTT, that's currently available um, is a device from microwave telemetry which does in fact weigh 5 grams. So we've been using them to track the um, migratory paths of cuckoos from Britain right the way across their annual cycle. Um, the advantage of using satellite tracking rather than geolocators is that the locations are a lot more accurate in, firstly um, so we know precisely where the bird has been down to the scale of say with, often within one kilometre sometimes even less whereas the geolocators will only give us something to within a couple of hundred kilometres on average um, so, there's, so the information is a lot more accurate but also importantly we get information beamed up virtually in real time which means we can know where the cuckoos are um, when the tag is on which is 10 hours um, every two and a half days we know where that cuckoo is more or less um, at that time. What this is useful for is it gives us information on the birds which don't come back. Geolocators, because they're archival, you only get information from a bird which successfully completes its migration and comes back and you recapture it. Whereas cuckoos, tagged with satellite tags, we're able to track their migration um, all the way through the annual cycle, even if they don't come back. And that's vital because it tells us something about what the birds that don't make it have done as well as the birds which do. On both these types of technology, geolocators and satellite tags, the main limitation is the size. Um, we want to track smaller and smaller birds because they're the ones we know, know, we know very little about. Um, but each bird can only take 3% of its body weight, maybe 5% at the top. Um, 
and the smaller they are the smaller effects they have on the birds which is obviously what we want to want to you know to do to track the birds whilst having no effect on their behavior as far as we can so what the main, what's going to limit what we could do in the future is the size of the tags, the miniaturisation process. Already satellite tags, for instance, have come down from 20, 30 grams less than a decade ago to 5 grams. And I know that there's going to be um, 2 gram PTTs available in the near future. So that's going to open up a whole new suite of species that we can track. And in the case of the cuckoo, it's going to enable us to track them better because we'll have a smaller device which weighs a smaller proportion of their body weight and therefore should have fewer effects and the information we'll be, get, we'll be getting will be that much more accurate on things like mortality rates etc. Um, with geolocators they're currently down to less than half a gram which enables us to track birds which are um, 15 grams at the small end of the spectrum safely but these are coming down as well and we could have one which is a third of a gram ready for next spring so this means that we've got birds down to almost 10 grams that we could track. Small warblers even are, are soon going to be um, within reach and the ability to actually see where individual birds have been all the way through their annual cycle is going to really revolutionize our information um, for these very uh, our understanding sorry um, of the migration cycles of these very small birds just the way it has so far for slightly larger species.